Welcome back to Oak Haven. Hay fever. Doesn't cause a fever? It's generally not caused by hay. So what else don't we know about this ailment that affects 1 in 10 Americans? So hay fever was originally named because it hits people the hardest in the fall when farmers are out collecting hay. Does hay cause hay fever? No, but some grasses could cause hay fever. The pollen produced from the grasses could cause hay fever. Hay fever is the body's response to airborne allergens. Mold, pollen, <clears throat> foreign bodies that, that you, uh, you inhale, get into your body, uh, onto your mucous membranes, and your body responds to them. We mentioned in our last video, which was on Tree of Heaven, the Tree of Heaven produces a copious amount of pollen in the spring, and that produces hay fever in a lot of people. There are other things that, that, uh, that bloom in the spring that produce hay fever, a lot of trees, um, birch trees, uh, box elder trees, cottonwood trees, these all produce pollen and people could respond to them in the springtime. In the fall, trees aren't blooming, but there's other things that are blooming that are producing pollen that we respond to. So in the fall, what causes hay fever? There's a lot of things that bloom in the, in the fall. Some of them produce hay fe fever and some of them don't. Generally, the plant that most people respond to in the fall is ragweed. This is common ragweed, Ambrosia artemisiafolia. Ambrosia, it's kind of a funny name. Ambrosia means food of the gods. Why they would use that to call the, the genus for ragweed, I have no idea. But, um, so you notice the, the flower and the leaves of common ragweed. A lot of people think that their hay fever is caused by goldenrod. Here's some goldenrod here. It's not quite opened up, so it's not quite as fluffy. Goldenrod is very showy at the same time people, most people get hay fever. So before we explain why ragweed causes hay fever and goldenrod doesn't, let's talk a little bit about what hay fever is. Hay fever is your body's response to these allergens coming into your body. So these foreign invaders come into your body, pollen, mold, things like that. Uh, and your body's response to that is to try to get rid of them. Some people do that effectively. Some people don't do, don't do that so effectively. People with allergies have issues with how effective their body is in responding. So these foreign uh, invaders come into your body and it uh, causes the release of histamines. Histamines are then pumped through your body and go to areas like your nose and cause your nose to swell and your eyes to water and and you start to cough and um, different things, which are, is your body's attempt to get rid of these foreign, foreign bodies, okay? That's fine, except that your body goes a little haywire. Haywire, I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> so the, uh, your, your body over-responds over to the histamines that are pumped through your body. So what we do uh, in our medical world is we take antihistamines anti to, uh, to work against the histamines that are naturally produced by your body to try to undo some of these things, the runny noses, the watery eyes, those things. So now you know what's going on inside your body, let's get back to the botany of it all. So remember I said that hay fever is your body's response to wind-blown allergens. Plants basically have two mechanisms for uh, spreading their pollen. Some plants, like these black-eyed Susans here, produce a showy flower, which uh, encourages pollinators, attracts pollinators. Uh, bees, butterflies, wasps, flies, things like that, that come and visit the flower. While they're visiting the flower, they pick up the pollen and spread it off to other, other flowers. Plants that, that uh, attract pollinators tend to produce pollen that's uh, sticky and heavier than other, poll uh, other pollen. Pollinators will pick up pollen packets directly from one flower and you know that it's going to take it directly to another flower. It's a little like FedEx for flowers, okay? They don't need to produce a lot of pollen because they know that the pollen that they produce is going to be spread to the next flower over. So, uh, pollinators or uh, uh, plants that, that attract pollinators tend to produce much less pollen and it tends to be heavier and tends to be stickier. 
So goldenrod fo falls into that first group of pollinators. Very showy flower, really attracts pollinators. Um, it's very effective in what it does. So the second group of plants that, uh, that have a different mechanism for spreading their pollen are things like ragweed. They spread their pollen by wind. Their pollen is lighter because it just spread willy-nilly all through the world and it doesn't know whether it's going to uh, reach another plant or not. It has to produce a lot more pollen. So ragweed produces huge amounts of pollen that tends to be lighter and spread more wide, widely. Ragweed pollen is so light that they've found ragweed pollen suspended in the air 400 miles out to sea. So goldenrod pollen, the pollen that it produces, either flies off <coughs> on pollinators or is heavy enough that it basically falls to the ground right around the plant. Whereas ragweed pollen is everywhere. So what do we do about that? If you're interested in taking ragweed, and even though it's a native plant, and if you want to remove it from your, your lawn area so that you can reduce how much pollen you have, that's fine. You're probably going to have plenty of pollen from your neighbors, um, but if that makes you feel good, go for it. Ragweed, on the other, or goldenrod, on the other hand, is a really important pollinator, so it's not hurting you. It's better to leave that here and allow the bees and the other bugs to, to benefit from the pollen. Ragweed, I'm sorry, goldenrod, goldenrod is one of the major sources of pollen that gets uh, beehives through the winter. So if you want to get rid of ragweed, that's fine. It's not going to hurt that much. Um, but goldenrod we want to save for the pollinators. So thanks for stopping by to learn about hay fever and ragweed and goldenrod. Uh, hopefully you learned something. If you did, please hit the like button. Um, if you can think of somebody who would benefit from this, we'd appreciate uh, you passing it on to them. Uh, we always appreciate new subscribers. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section. We try to get back to people and start a conversation on that. So thanks for coming along.